Touch the Sky is Kanye's best song and in this video I'll explain why. <coughs> um, uh, rolling. I've always enjoyed asking people what their favorite Kanye song is, because I've heard a lot of different answers. I mean, there are the usual answers like Runaway, Jesus Walks, Through the Wire, Homecoming, Power or Devil in a New Dress, which don't get me wrong, all of those songs that I've mentioned are beyond valid, but they are the usuals. But I don't think I've ever heard anyone say the words, Touch the Sky is my favorite Kanye song, and I've always found that strange. And I know people do love Touch the Sky, but I don't see it being mentioned in those which one are you choosing from these four Kanye songs Twitter posts. Or X posts. So my mission for today is to... Get my point across. Let's say that. Touch the Sky was released on the 30th of October 2005 as the fourth single to Kanye's second album Late Registration. That's it. Now let's get really into it. I remember the first time that I heard this song, I immediately knew that it was special. Something about it clicked for me on another level. I can't say what it was because, you know, it was years ago, but even then I knew Ball. As I listened to the song more and more over the years, I realized that, yeah, this is the one. The first thing that you realize when listening to the song is, holy shit, this is the best beat in history of ever. The beat was produced by Just Blaze and it was given to Kanye, which makes it the only song on late registration that doesn't feature any Kanye production. For the beat, Just Blaze sampled a Curtis Mayfield song called Move On Up. The instrumental of Touch the Sky is beautiful and I think that it's the best beat Kanye has ever rapped over. It sounds very free, uplifting, beautiful and just positive. The beat perfectly complements the lyrics and the deliveries from both Kanye and Lupe. When you start the song, you almost get like a Pharrell 4 count at the beginning. Then the beat immediately kicks in and Kanye starts rapping the chorus of the track. In the chorus, Kanye introduces us to the theme of the song which is self-belief. He uses the term touch the sky in a few different ways in the chorus with each of them having a different meaning. You can interpolate touching the sky as in the literal sense that when Kanye dies he will touch the sky as in he will go to heaven. Which makes sense because the line before that he says I gotta testify which could mean that he's testifying to God. In the other sense you can interpolate the term touching the sky as accomplishing all of your goals before dying. Or you can take it in the way that before you die you just stop caring about what other people think about you. You. I've never heard anyone interpolate the chorus in this way, but to me, it does make sense. I personally take the line, come up in the spot looking extra fly as not caring about what other people think about you because you're comfortable with who you are. If you think I'm waffling, type it in the comments. In the first verse, Kanye is describing his come up and how people viewed him before he started to blow up versus how people view him now that he is quote unquote famous. This verse flows like a story because as the verse progresses, you see Kanye become closer and closer to being a signed artist and at the end of the verse he finally becomes one. In the first few bars we see how Kanye is struggling to make people take him seriously. In this era Kanye was super left field compared to everyone else. Because in 2005 the normal rapper looked like this and Kanye at the time was dressing like this. He was rocking the polo shirts with bright colors that at the time maybe did kinda sabotage him, but he would rather be himself than to fit in and be someone who he isn't. Along his problem with getting signed, he wasn't living in the best conditions. Him and his mom were constantly moving and as he said, he didn't have no phone. But all this didn't demotivate him as in 2002, Jay-Z, after some hesitation, signed Kanye to his label Rockefeller. This didn't change Kanye, but it did prove that you can be yourself and still make it. Now he just doesn't have to wait in lines to get into clubs. At the end of the verse, Kanye does a fire play on words mentioning his almost fatal car crash and going into heaven. Sounds familiar. Then, you know... The chorus is played, but after the chorus we get the post-chorus. The post-chorus kinda adds to the whole metaphor of touching the sky as Kanye sings Let's take them high, 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 high. While in the background he screams top of the world baby on top of the world. I think that Kanye is just saying how this song is supposed to motivate the listener or make the listener feel like they're on top of the world. For me this song does both of these things perfectly, the amount of dopamine that I get from this song is unmatched. Like if you gave me 4 pounds of cr- 
In the second verse, we get more of Kanye's brilliant storytelling, as he basically recalls his life before the fame. At the very start of the verse, he gives a shout out to a rapper called Slick Rick, which I guess was one of Kanye's biggest inspirations at the time. I really like how open and honest Kanye gets on this verse, as he mentions how he used to be broke, how he struggled with mental health, and how he wasn't loyal to this whole. I find this verse to be actually hilarious, as Kanye mentions these very specific things. Like at the beginning when he raps that he'll do anything to say that he got it, and the next line is damn the new loafers hurt my pocket. Damn, I really miss when Kanye was this funny on a track. Kanye also brings up that before anybody would buy his beats, he had to split a buffet at KFC with his girl cause he couldn't afford to buy two. Kanye then brings up how insecure he was before he got signed to Rockefeller. He was having nervous breakdowns because all these other rappers were making it big and he was still trying to figure things out. He was confident in his art but he was still questioning himself because like who wouldn't? If you think that you're making quality stuff but it isn't getting the recognition that you think that it deserves, it really has you thinking is it even good or worth making? At the end Kanye talks about cheating on women. I really like the end of Kanye's second verse, he does some great storytelling and this goddamn line. I'm trying to right my wrongs but it's funny them same wrongs help me write this song, tell me that's not some of the greatest lyricism you've ever heard. Then the chorus hits again, but this time Kanye singing the chorus to the girl, aka the listener. I really like that subtle change, as Kanye is done talking about his experiences as that was his last verse on the song. Now he has nothing to say on the track, and the main focus is now on the listener. He said everything that he wanted to, and now it's your time to go accomplish your dreams. The final verse of the song is performed by Lupe Fiasco, which at the time that this song came out, he was quite unknown. So this was his time to prove something. And oh boy did he prove something. This verse basically launched Lupe into stardom, which is quite ironic because at first Lupe didn't want to be on the song, but thankfully he later changed his mind. Lupe's verse on the song is insane, his triple entendres and punchlines are so good on here. From the beginning to the end, every line, every word, every breath in his verse has meaning. Just for an example, at the start he references how he's on the third verse on the song and the third track on the album. This is only a tiny example but trust me with this, go to Genius, load up Touch the Sky, scroll down to Lupe's verse and check out every line. I'm telling you, this man was on some shit writing his verse. I honestly can't imagine how it was back in 2005 hearing this new artist on a Kanye song can absolutely murder his verse. Here are some of the lines that I absolutely love from Lupe's verse, but as I said, this man snapped. After what is quite possibly the greatest feature on any rap song ever, we again get the chorus. And then the outro. In the outro, Kanye is shouting with Back at Home Baby and singing the words I'm Sky High, which just reflects how he felt at the time. He was on top of the world, finally living his dreams of being a successful rapper. I told you that this was Kanye's best song. I...